So this is my 14th day now working on working on the van. Um, so two weeks, not full days, some days just a couple of hours. Um, but it's been two weeks of the project and it's, it's so much fun. I, I can't believe I haven't done this sooner to be honest. I mean usually my day is spent sitting next, sitting next to PC um, or sitting on a desk at a PC. So this is a nice change and every night I, when I finish doing the work here I get home and I just want to get sleep over and done with so I can get back on, on this project and keep going. So I just thought I'd share that because uh, if you are going to do one yourself it is enjoyable, it's good fun. <laughs> So we've just installed in some of the water pipes and I've actually just found out that it's better to put water pipes in all underneath um, rather than this hose. But we've got lots of hose now so we're going to be using the hose. It still works fine, just have to, just to make sure you don't get any kinks in it. So for instance on these corners here, rather than just bending it round like this here, we'll put these elbows on. These, a bit of a tip. They're real tight to get on. So simply just get some boiling water as I prepared earlier. Hold it in for a few seconds. Make sure your Jubilee clip's on there already. That makes a massive difference to get it on. And as you can see, it is actually still quite hard to get on. So without, without doing that, it's really, really hard. So instead of the rubber hose connectors, um, this is what you'd use for the for the plastic pipe, which is just a push fit connector. And I've got um, a pipe here coming off the water heater just to show as an example of how much easier it is to, to use the pipe rather than the hose. So you don't make the same mistake I did. And that just pushes on there. And you can get a little, like a little collar that goes into this bit to make sure that doesn't release because to release it, it won't release, but to release it, you push that in and pull it back and that's it. So it's a lot it's a lot easier, a lot quicker to, and a bit neater as well to, to be doing all the water system with the pipe rather than this rubber hose. Pipe, not hose. <gasps> hose. Pimp's not hose. Pimp. Yeah. Although I think you have to use this rubber hose for outside and that might be to do with freezing or something like that, I'm not too sure. Okay, just chopping the insulation up for the floor. And you're gonna think this is sad, but it's so nice the way it just slots in there, all level. I'm loving it. I've just ripped the waste pipe out before I put the floor in because, uh, look at it, it's just, it's just a bit thin and I was a bit concerned about it. And this join, this Y piece here isn't actually the right Y piece for it, so I had to like silicon it a bit and mess about of it. So instead, now I've got this one which is flatter and a nice proper join there. Last thing we want is waste getting blocked. Gonna pop a bit of silicon in this joint because they don't actually they're not actually fully watertight, which is a bit a bit shit. And I pull it to the edge a bit because I don't really want it pushed in and blocking the blocking the drain. Right, so I've got all the water pipes in, um, ready for the floor to go down, but I just want to do a quick check to make sure there's no leaks or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Lots of air. Cool. Really good flow. No, the water. Okay. Got some drying up in here to do. Right now I'm just gonna leave the system 
Uh, I'm going to leave it overnight actually, dry it up, leave it overnight and see if we've got any wet bits tomorrow. Turns out the shower base is a bit bigger than it looked on the internet. We've got the board insulation in the Celotex um, and now we're just putting this uh, silvery foil bubbly wrappy stuff over the top of it. That's professional. What's it called? Insulation. Thinking about it actually, I think we should have put the silver side facing out. Yeah. Definitely. It's not going to matter too much for the floor, is it? I mean, it's to keep the heat out more, I think. Oh yeah, it's not going to keep it out. It's, it's not going to make much of a difference. It's... Um, um, on the sides, we'll do the silver side facing out. Sticking it down with this silver, like, metal tape which a friend got me. But a good tip for this situation is get a spare piece of this board for your knees so you don't damage any of, of your insulation. Because it's pretty awkward. I was just trying to balance on all the little blocks before and it's pretty awkward to do so. Okay, so we've got the second part of the floor going in now. We've just put all expanded foam in all the gaps. As you see here. All the pipes in. I mean, this is just this horrible colour stuff is just a r uh, rust inhibitor. Okay, so now we're ready to put down the silvery, bubbly, wrappy stuff again. And then the hard floor on top. B and Q again. Good morning. Now we'll start again. So anyway. Okay, so today we're going to do the insulation on the sides. Or at least one side. And it's cold today. Three degrees. So I'm going to put the diesel heater on actually. While we're working in here. Um, right, so my priority with the insulation is more to keep the heat out than to keep the heat in. So, as far as I understand it, this stuff is um, a radiation thermal insulator and this stuff um, insulates from conductive heat transference. So. I'm assuming that most of the heat on the van is going to be from the sun, which is radiation. <laughs> so this will make sense to go on first, and then have uh, the, con the conductive insulation next. That's the logical way of it, but from, from messing about with things, I think it's just going to be too awkward to do that. It'd just be easier for the, for the actual difference that it makes to just have this this on top, the same as we did with the floor. Because uh, I mean, this was a bit of shiny stuff anyway, so I'm guessing that's a bit of, of uh, radiation th insulation there anyway. We also want this to act as um, a bit of a membrane, so it needs to be sealed all the way around. I think if it's in there like that, it's going to be a bit harder to do, you know, to get around these edges and stuff. It's better just have the foam and then that. So that's what we're going to do. This is proper fun. Well, that grow in there? Hmm. It's growing. It looks nice, and I was trying to make it look like my so nice. <laughs> I was just like peeing and peeing. How did you measure it? <laughs> Marcella? What did you use to measure it? We're currently putting this insulation in some of the gaps. It's uh, recycled plastic bottles, or recycled plastic. So it's good because it's recycled and it's going to be a really good insulation as well. Uh, and it's good for the bits, like, for instance, in, in the door, it's going to be good for here. Uh, if there's any moving parts or anything else where expanding foam would stop those moving parts moving. thanks for watching all links to products materials everything else that i've used will be in the description 
along with some other little handy links. And then at the end of this really cool little outro thing, there's some info on the ebook. Cheers, guys.